We are back for another edition of JPL in 30, the highlight show for the Jamaica Premier League. We are into the ninth week of the competition and the action continues to sizzle. We begin our highlights package this week from the Stadium East Field in Kingston as Dunby Holden FC look to rack up three straight wins when they face Tivoli Gardens in the first match of our Sunday doubleheader. Check out the highlights. The setting, Stadium East in St. Andrew. That's the field with the red track circling it. That's where we're coming from this afternoon. A glorious shot of the city of Kingston and parts of St. Andrew in it. Done beholding the team from St. Catherine, battling the only team from Kingston in the Premier League, Tivoli Gardens. Done beholding starting 11, Damien Hyatt in goal. Ricardo Thomas, the captain. Shavoy Watkin, Zakia Wilkes, Shaquin Powell, Alex Gale, Shevan James, Roger Smith, Rohan Brown, Stephen Barnett and the man wearing number 10, Nicholas Nelson for coach Lenworth. Teacher high, still on a high from last night's performance of Clarendon College in that Da Costa Cup final, dismantling Glenmuir in an eight goal thriller. This is the starting 11 that Jerome Wade has penciled in for today. Nicholas Clark in goal, Odin Pennycook, Barrington Price, Richard Brown, Alton Lewis, Alkaline, Nakila Wright, Justin Dunn, Jane Ray. Kevin Garnett, Keno Simpson, Nakalia Fuller, a four Jerome Wade, number 10, Radiko Wellington, watch him on the bench, and number six, Neat and Tidy, Horatio Morgan. Sun was hot by the time we were sent underway. And Gale bursting forward, the first chance. And uh, Nicholas Clark off his chest. Smith, Nelson off his chest. Plays it, the, the dummy by Barnett, and then Smith couldn't steer it goalwards. And then from free kick range, Nicholas Nelson. Ooh, how delicious was that? You can have that with your Sunday dinner, and you won't eat a slice of cheesecake because that's sweet enough. That was goal number one. Gale across. Look at this now. Twisting Barrington Price this way and that, and then Nicholas Nelson. Finds the back of Clark's neck. Good work by Shaheen Powell. And then leaving it to the marksman to do the rest. And he finished with a plum. That looked pretty. The Dunby Holden bench loved it. But then Tivoli struck back because Stephen Barnett wrestled Tivoli man to the floor. Looked to have been Barrington Price and Justin Dunn from 12 yards. No mistake. Sending the keeper the wrong way. The league's leading marksman with his eighth of the season. Keena Simpson couldn't direct his shot for goal. Well, he directed the goal, but without power. Second half, well, still first half. Gale driving that forward, but Nicholas Clark in a good position. Then the second half, Alton Lewis flings this towards the goal. Didn't clear the header. Look at that first touch and second touch by Justin Dunn. You're going to see it again from this angle. Look at this first touch to take the ball down. The second touch and the third was decisive. Fired it in. Threw some bodies in blue. And then the body in yellow. Or green if you may. Well, yellow and green. Damien Hyatt couldn't keep it out. His second of the afternoon. His ninth of the season. Then Fuller from free kick range. Had Hyatt flying. And then Fuller once again will help to create this chance. Done on a platter for Horatio Morgan. He nods the breeze. Everybody thought that one would have gone in. And then from this play, Justin Dunn rockets it goalwards. Hyatt got in the way with his big frame and fell heavily. Had to get some treatment, Damien Hyatt. And then this last chance, Horatio Morgan again. And Thompson, the second half substitute. The substitutes combining. And Thompson just couldn't get a foot on it. Tivoli rampant late in the second half, pushing for the victory. Thompson again to Morgan. Hyatt with the save with his legs. Tivoli, coulda, woulda, shoulda. Jerome Wade cutting Latin on the bench. And Andrew Hayden called the time at about 95 minutes. Done beholding, there were 21 shots, five on target for both teams. There were 45 fouls. Wow, there were eight yellow cards, 14 corners, even split. 
saves, even split, three apiece. Tivoli, 53% possession. Chris Taylor has, has our man of the match. Justin Dunn, pitch side. Justin, another man of, the, man of the match performance for you as well. You just can't stop scoring nine goals on the season. Assess your performance today for me. Uh, um, well, I think we start very flat. I just see Dunn bowling score two on us in the first half. And we got a penalty. And in the dressing room, we told ourselves that second half we're coming out and display a better performance for the Tivoli Guard FC. So it's all square between Dunn Beholden and Tivoli in the opening encounter. But we jump into a break here on JPL in 30. Stay with us. When we come back, it will be the big showdown between Waterhouse FC and Portmore United. Welcome back to JPL in 30. The second match of Sunday's doubleheader saw two former champions locking horns as Waterhouse FC welcomed Portmore United. Let's pick up the full match highlights. This drone shot showing you the pictures uh, from the hills of St. Andrew to the north uh, to where we are now in St. Andrew, heading down towards the sea, heading out towards City Kingston. Waterhouse and Portmore, that's the matchup at the Stadium East Field here in St. Andrew. Kamara Foster in goal for Waterhouse, Nicoy Christian, Andre Fletcher, Kenny Dunk, Deacon, Elvis Wilson, Denardo Thomas, Navarro Blair, Andre Smith, Keith Simpson, Javain Brand, and Damian Vins for head coach Marcel Gale. For Portmore United in goal, Tyrone Williams, then Okilo Howard, Stephen Young, Akeem Mullins, Jaheen Rose, Siegel Knight, Alex Marshall, Emilia Rousseau, Siobhan Walsh, Martin Davis, and the man with the classic surname Clayton Peck for coach Philip Williams. Full match highlights for you now. Alex Marshall, Siobhan Walsh, Martin Davis, Clayton Peck. Peck has a pop from distance. Easy for Kamara Foster in the Waterhouse goal. Long ball over the top. Martin Davis chases this. He was prominent in the first half. Fires the crossing and Walsh got there, but couldn't direct his header goal. What's there was more than enough chance, or there were more than enough chances for Portmore to find a second goal. And then Siegel Knight with this ball. Look at Peck. Beg your pardon, Blair. Not accounting for the speed of Okila Howard, who blows past him, fires the crossing, and Elvis Wilson inadvertently turning it beyond his goalkeeper for 1 0 in the first half. Walsh turns, plays a ball to Howard. Foster had everything behind it. And then Andre Smith on the dribble. Works his shooting angle, but didn't get much on it. Denardo Thomas, robbed by Walsh. Walsh runs at Keithy Simpson, drags it by Simpson off the left foot. Look at his kick save. Class from Kamara Foster. And how crucial did that save prove to be to keep the score at only 1-0. And then late, late in the contest, this free kick, side netting. But they'd come again from free kick land. This is Denardo Thomas, over the top, Javain Bryan, expert control. Couldn't get the shot goalwards. He was substituted not long after. And then look at this ball. Inch perfect, measured by Nicoy Christian. Rondi Smith pulls it back, Rivaldo Mitchell snatches at it. And Denardo Thomas trying to hang in the air and then direct his header goalwards. Couldn't do all that at the same time. And then the last kick of the game, Keith Simpson. Look at the wall, it really wasn't really much of a defensive barrier. And he breached it to Tyrone Williams' is left to bail Marcel Gale's team out at the very, very end. 1-1 between Waterhouse and Portmore United.
so. 23 shots overall, 6 on target for Portmore, 5 for Waterhouse. There were 28 fouls, 4 yellow cards, 3 of those yellow cards to Waterhouse players. And Waterhouse had 52% possession. Chris Taylor is pitch side with our man of the match, Keith Simpson. Been around so long, you've seen it all. When that free kick came, there was no doubt. We saw from the start that you were adamant you wanted to kick that. You ran away all the contenders. Why? Well, as the senior player, first and foremost, you know, I just feel I had to take charge there. You know, I took the responsibility and it paid off. Was the plan always to go through the wall or you were watching to see how they would have set themselves up? Yeah, I was watching for the setup and I thought he, he made it a, a bit easier for me, you know, by um, having that one man in line with the post. So it gave me a proper aim, so I took the chance. Gave you a target. Tell me, what it is about this Portmore team that makes it so difficult? Three one-all draws now in a row against them. Well, um, you have to be honest, you know, um, it's a good team, you know, um, hats off to the work they are doing. You know, I, I think we also, we don't take our chances whenever we get them, but hats off to the team, they have been working hard, it's just, it, sometimes it don't happen how you want it, but you have to just go back to the training ground and work hard and just push on until it, get, it gets right. I must ask you this before you go. You were out of the system for a while. You decided to come back and play some more. How important is your leadership, your experience, if this Waterhouse team is to go all the way? And can they go all the way? Well, first and foremost, whatever I decide to do, I always put my all in it. You know, and I have to give respect um, to the coaching staff and the management staff for always believing in me. So I, I'm just trying to repay the faith, you know. So Waterhouse and Portmore shared the points for a third time in as many games. Much more action still to come as we go to another break. Stay with us as Monday Night Football action comes your way. Welcome back to JPL in 30. We kick off our Monday football feast with Seller Club Mullines United looking to eke out more points as they face Harborview in our opening encounter. Donald Oliver takes us through the full match highlights. Welcome back to Savannah Park as we prepare for a couple of matches in the Rainham Jamaica Premier League. And we're looking forward to this one. Mullines United up against Harborview. As we take a look at the Starting lineup Peter Harrison is between the sticks. They do have a back four of Javon Brown back at left back in the middle in the middle, Sergini Frankson, Dijon Grant, and on the right, Enrique Gordon. In the middle of the park, Taraj Andrews, Steve Reed, and Jeremy Nelson. And uh, up top, Shamara Dennis, Daniel Hardy on the right hand side, and Richard Gooden down the middle. He'll be making his first start in the Ray Navy Jamaica Premier League. For Mario Palma between the sticks for this evening. The captain Harding at left back. Beside him, Romain Brackenridge and Jean Talbot and Akima Jones in the middle of the park. Garth Stewart, Kasim Priestley, and of course, Ajuma Johnson. And up top, a late change with uh, Courtney Allen uh, being brought into the starting lineup. Andre Fagan and Shaquille Bradford completing the trio up top. Yeah. As we take a look at the full-time highlights here at Sabina Park. And uh, have a view with the early attempt from outside the box. Peter Harrison was uh, behind it. And then Dennis was tripped just inside the box. Was appealing for the penalty, got it, and Jeremy Nelson converting from 12 yards. 1 0 to Malines United. No issues there for Nelson on the spot. Harborview still fighting, still looking for an opening. And that one was dragged wild by Ajuma Johnson. Allen busting his way through and taking a shot from distance. Harrison 
holding on at the second attempt. Jones's ball inside, well, ended up taking a shot on target. Harrison read that well. And then Harrison again there to repel that attack. Then Jones is born inside at the back post. First time attempt from Allen. Couldn't guide it goalwards. Allen again in the thick of things. And then this one was fired hard by Fagan. Harrison with a good save. But then an even better one. Got Stewart with the header. And Harrison again flying to his left. Getting hands on it. And then Malines United went two goals clear. Hardy doing well. The overlapping run by Jason Wright and the finish, beautiful. That's his second of the season. Really beautiful football played by Malines United today. And surely they thought they were on their way to three points over Harborview for the first time ever. But then the game just got absolutely crazy. Allen deflected inside and bundled over the line by Shaquille Bradford. Yep, no issues there. Harrison almost pulled off another miracle save. It's not the first time he would collide with a player with Bradford. We'll see that a little bit later on. But then a second yellow card for this challenge. Our feeling was that he got some ball, a lot of the ball in fact. Maybe the yellow card, the second yellow card was a bit harsh. So he was sent off. Here's the collision I was telling you about. Bang. Penalty awarded to Bradford and Harborview, Bradford cracking the crossbar in the process. Went on the line and out. And of course, interfering with play, coming from an offside position. But look at this, as they speak about madness. Frankson was in line to get player of the game, in my opinion. And just a rush of blood to the head. And here, to win it, or to get back into it. And Bradford did. Loose ball came to him. And he always seems to be in the right position. Unmarked. Placing that to the right of the keeper. Good finish too. 2-2. Two -two. And there was still time for both teams to get in it. I'm ecstatic about the performance, but still kind of um, killing myself for, for the penalty, you know. Who knows what could happen after I scored that one, but could have it's, been just a trick, eh? the, it's just a part of the game. I saw you shaking your head at the end of the game when you were sitting on the turf. Were you reflecting over the whole game? Why were you shaking your head? I mean, it's one of those games where, where we show um, more potential and create a lot of chances, but, um, you know, more, more, more finishing work got to be done on the training ground, yeah. Based on the starting formation at 4-3-3, a lot of the time you had to do the work on your own. How difficult was that or is it something that you're used to? Well, that's a part of my game from, from Waterhouse, you know, pressing team and uh, I bring the, 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 the display to, to all of you, so it, it, it's not a problem to me. So a third draw in match week nine takes us into our Monday night late game as Cavalier take on leaders Mount Pleasant. Here is Donald Oliver once again. Hello, it's time for Monday night football at Sabina Park in the Rennevue Jamaica Premier League and it's a big one it's a repeat of last season's finale Cavalier up against Mount Pleasant once again the lineups Vino Barclay back between the sticks they have a back three of Giovanni Leng Kyle Ming the captain and Shamar Watson in the middle of the park Gadiel Irving Adrian Reed, the schoolboy back in the thick of things for Cavalier at the Premier League level Having uh, enjoyed his exploits at St. George's College, Dwayne Allen, Ronaldo Robinson, Chanil Thomas, Janmara Calvin from Antigua and Barbuda, and Jerome McCleary complete the starting lineup. As we take a look at the Mount Pleasant unit, Shaquan Davis again between the sticks. They have a back four of McCullough, the captain, to Topi, Jamoy Topi, Fitzroy Cummings, and Odain Murray in the middle of the park. Ramon Howell, 
Romeo Guthrie and Mal, Romeo Guthrie and uh, Demario Phillips, Akwasa Chung and Dwight Merrick completing the starting lineup along with Devontae Campbell. As we take a look at the full-time highlights here. Mount Pleasant dictated terms in the early stages. That was some wonderful work by Devontae Campbell and the shot from Sune Makala deflected and over the bar. And then this effort from McCleary saw the save being made. There was an appeal for a penalty as Calvin fell into the box. There's another magnificent save denying Shanil Thomas, Shaquan Davis moving smartly and low down to his right to stop the shot again. Devonte Campbell was absolutely electrifying, twisting and turning and getting the ball inside, headed behind. <laughs> Cavalier knew that they missed a, a big one there, just evaded it. And then Campbell with some brilliant work sending that one inside the header down, the shot through the legs of Vino Barclay. Guthrie getting his first goal, and it's a moment he'll remember for Mount Pleasant. It was a delightful ball, absolutely delicious from Campbell. And then Guthrie, yep, got help from Merrick. And opening his account this campaign, he likes the moment for his new club. This one slipped through, and uh, Giovanni Lang with a second yellow card here. First one was probably a little bit harsh, but that was certainly what was to have happened here. And it's disappointment all round. Lang knew it was coming, he went off. But then Cavalier went into another gear. Again, a stunning save by Shaquan Davis to his right. And then the penalty. James was slipping, but he took down Shanil Thomas with him. Thomas with the conversion from 12 yards, getting his second goal of the season. And uh, that was the equalizer. But they would press on. Look at that header. The Antiguan, the youngster with the header. He's been in fabulous form this season, Jalmara Calvin. That's his third of the campaign. And their number seven won it in the end, coming from behind. And Rudolf Speed was ecstatic there. They still had to weather a few storms. The ball inside headed away. Barclay was left flapping at that one. Still an opportunity, but they were back in numbers eventually. And then the shot coming in from James, fingertip save. Another Caribbean man almost making headlines there. Nathaniel James from Trinidad and Tobago. And Chanel Thomas could have finished this, you know, had all the time in the world. But again, Davis with the save. Just magnificent. They managed to hold on in the end, Cavalier. I'm very proud. Playing with a man shot, we come out with a victory. I'm very, very proud of my team. After a very disappointed final, my team come out, show the effort that we have, we can fight, still have the fight in us. I'm very proud. You've been in this Cavalier squad for a while. You've been patient now into the starting line of three goals on the season. Yes. Uh, how do you feel generally about your performance throughout the season and what are you looking forward to? Well, there's room for improvement. A lot of room for improvement, but I'm very proud of the progress that I've made so far. I'm also grateful for Mr. Speed for believing in me and putting me out there on the field. And playing here in Jamaica as well, of course, you represent Antigua and Barbuda at the under-20 level. Um, how big is that for you, cross-cultures as well? Well, it's not really much. I was actually born in Jamaica, so it wasn't really a difficult transition to actually come back to Jamaica and play. And how do you feel Cavalier team is coming on now? We, well, it's a slow progress, but we're getting there. We're getting there every match. Right. Tapa, your first taste of defeat, you must say a pretty entertaining match right throughout. Well, yes, um, definitely, um, unfortunately. We came out um, on the, the wrong end, but um, I think it was a well-deserved victory for the, the, the Cavalier team. Um, I, I thought after we went, went up 1-0 and um, the Cavalier get a centre of, I think, complacency creeping, especially um, when you look on the, the penalty uh, 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 and a goal from the corner, I think it was complacency. So 
all in all, I think credit must be given to the Cavalier team tonight. Yeah, and you run the changes as well. You tried different options. You changed tactics somewhat, a slightly tweak maybe in formation, but it still didn't work. And when you look at the, the balance of the game, it could have gone either way. Well, yes, um, but as I said before, unfortunately, we, we, we came out um, on the wrong end. You know? But um, as, as I said before, credit must be given to the, the Cavalier team. We know the Cavalier team. Um, if you look on the history of Cavalier, they know how to play with 10 men. They know how to ten play with them and I think we we gave up too many options for them in, in, in the last half. Rudolph, finally Cavalier getting it done against Mount Pleasant. As you said, this kind of match, as I said to Tapa as well, could have gone either way. Very entertaining. Um, both of you had your chances. In the end, you took the majority. Yeah, it was a difficult match, but you know, we were like tent. We're not really accustomed to be down there. And um, we lost two games in a row again. We're not accustomed to losing two games in a row. I had a good feeling this morning about this game, um, but I must say, after going out to 10, you know, the boy showed character. And um, I know what they expect me to come and play the three at the back. This time we go four because yeah, if you notice, they were trying to spread the ball to the flank, but we were prepared for that. And um, You made that change early as well, since you mentioned that. You, you started out with a 3 5 2, but we saw early Gadiel Irving sat in at, at the back four. What was the reason for that? What was the thinking? Well, they, if you notice, they, they had two wingers and then they, they wove, the wing back were overlapping. So we know that was there. They were trying to pinpoint those places. So using a, a direct full back.